Welcome back to our 92nd episode of the Launcher Farm Show. Where I interview Adam McInnes, who's the founder and owner of RM Marketing. In this episode, Adam and I talk about why you must build in a know, like, and trust factor to your business and how you can automate it so you won't have to think about it. Adam also shares how to create more advanced touch points in your farm that leverage strategy stacking so you'll always be remembered. Then we talk about what type of organic content you can use based on things you already know to create value and help position you as the expert in your farm. And Adam shares a super easy way to get traffic online through offline marketing and how to track it so that you can monitor your success super easily. Plus, we talk about how to create offers that can get your audience to engage and give you their contact information so that you can build a solid database in your community. Plus, we talk about a ton of other ideas that you can use to grow your geographic farm. So be sure to check out this episode, like and subscribe, and enjoy the episode with Adam. Welcome back to another episode of the Launcher Farm Show. I'm your host, Ryan Smith, and today we've got a great guest. It's Adam McInnes from RM Marketing. So Adam, take a second, tell us a bit about yourself and why you're here. Sure. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Ryan, for having me. So um, obviously, you mentioned it. My name is Adam McInnes. Um, I am the founder and owner of RM Marketing. Um, I've been in the sales and marketing space for the better part of 10 years now, um, and a little more than five years ago, I started my digital marketing career uh, specifically for real estate agents. And, you know, I, I have to be honest, I picked the real estate niche. You know, I knew I had a skill. I knew I had some talent and I knew I had some amazing ideas for my business. Um, and I selfishly picked the real estate <laughs> niche um, because I myself am just so interested in real estate investing um, as a whole. And I thought to myself, hey, if, if I use the knowledge and the experience and the things that I know to help real estate agents. I'll connect with real estate agents all across North America, mm -hmm. um, and which will really make my investing potential unlimited. Um, so that's actually why I got into the real estate space. And over the past five years, you know, I've worked with hundreds of different agents, um, you know, in many different capacities and many different platforms. And, you know, I've really developed some amazing relationships and really just fallen in love with the real estate industry as a whole. So far as I've actually registered with my local real estate board here in Alberta, Canada, um, to look at actually getting my license as well and taking nice. the things that I know, you know, literally right to the market. So that's awesome. Um, yeah, that's a little bit of a backstory about me. That's my inverse of me. So I got into real estate and then worked in myself into the, into the marketing <laughs> space. So I'm shifting out of it and, and focusing on that. So that's awesome. And I know you do a lot of awesome things and you've got some really unique approaches. And I know you've helped a lot of agents do some great online marketing and some offline. And that's really the, the kind of point I wanted to dive in today is really leveraging online and offline. Because I find a lot of agents struggle with kind of merging those two worlds. I, th I find a lot of agents, especially older, old school agents are great at offline marketing. They're great at doing delivery postcards and, 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 and park benches and things like that. And then you got agents who are great at online. And sometimes they miss the mark on really bringing those two together. And I think there's a lot of opportunity, you know, I've talked about it, is that there's a lot of opportunities for agents to really merge those two and get better results and get better performance and really grow their farm in a whole different way and stand out from the competition. So before we dive into that, I, I want to kind of share what is it that you do when it comes to the marketing side of things and how do you help agents then? And then we can kind of talk about some of the strategies you've, you've used. Sure. So, you know, the core of what we do as a business is obviously lead generation and helping realtors not just generate and find the leads, but also use systems and automations to actually remove themselves from the mundane mm -hmm. stuff. Um, you know, I find that in a, in a lot of cases when I've chatted with realtors in the past who have tried um, any sort of online marketing strategies, they always say, oh, it doesn't work. And I ask, well, <laughs> why do you think it didn't work? Um, and they never really have a good answer. Their answer is always, oh, the leads were bad. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, nobody responded to me. Um, and then my next question is, okay, well, how how often did you actually engage with these people and how often did you actually provide some sort of value beyond a templated follow-up campaign? Mm. Um, and, you know, I actually, I actually just wrote a blog on this the other day. It's a 12 step framework to creating value added nurture campaigns um, that actually build the no like, and trust factor. So a lot of what I do, Ryan, is I, yes, we find the leads. That's the easy part. Um, but the, the hard part is actually, creating a solid nurture foundation that is 
both personal um, and valuable to the leads that you're actually engaging with. Um, and so that's really in a nutshell what we do. Um, lately, um, we've actually moved a lot into more of an organic marketing structure because okay. we've always found that leads that actually come to you are 10,000 times easier to convert than leads that you, you know, they fill out a form on, on social media to get a, a lead magnet. Um, once they get that lead magnet, they ghost you versus, um, you know, setting up and optimizing profiles like Google My Business um, is a great way to actually help get people to find you organically when they're searching for a realtor in your local market. Um, and then we've paired that with software to actually generate you know, five-star reviews for businesses and then taking those five-star reviews and turning them into referral partners um, so that you can grow organically through your existing database. So that's, that's our primary and core focus right now is just actually creating an organic structure so that A, you can be found yep. online when people are looking for your services and B, once you are found, you have a system in place to properly nurture your potential prospects and clients. Um, and then once they've actually converted to a close, we've got systems on the back end to actually now make sure that you don't forget to talk to those people. <laughs> yeah. um, it, you know, it's really, it's really easy when you're a, a, a newer agent and you've got a small database of maybe, you know, 50 to a hundred people in your sphere of influence. Um, it's pretty easy to keep in touch with those people, you know, every, every couple months um, yeah. and hit those 27 touch points. But once your database grows, to you know, 500 plus, well, now it's nearly impossible. Um, yeah. And so we actually focus a lot on just automating those touch points so that you just talk to the people that want to talk to you um, when your message goes out. Exactly. And I think you hit the nail on the head with explaining that there's a big difference between leads coming to you and you chasing leads because a lot of agents I find have had experience with Maybe they're working with friends, family referrals, and they find it's easy to do that. Then they want to up their game and they try to jump into online marketing. They try to jump into social media and then they don't realize the amount of work it actually takes to convert those leads. And they don't want to put the time in. They don't want to build the systems. They don't want to create the follow-up plans. And they then say, like you said, oh, the leads are junk. It's not, it doesn't work. The truth is it does, but it does take a whole different set of skills and it takes a whole different level of, of understanding. And I, again, I find myself in my, my own coaching and training that I have agents who jump in with both feet, or you get agents who say, I want to generate a bunch of leads, not have to do anything, not have to spend any money, get all this free stuff. And it's like, it, it doesn't exist like that. You either have to put the time and the money and, or the energy into it to get the results. However, there are things you can do that will generate warmer leads. But again, it's going to take time, money, or resources to be able to do that. So for the newer leads, or for, sorry, for the online leads, where have you found is the most successful or the easiest place for agents to get leads? Because generating leads, like you said, is easy. What's been easy for you or what have you found that agents have been using that's successful and, and, and easy to implement? You know, if, if I'm going to be blunt, um, which I'm just a straight up kind of guy, straightforward kind of guy, um, the easiest and cheapest place to get leads, whether that's, you know, through paid advertising or organic um, is in my opinion, Facebook, um, Google is a great place to get, you know, more expensive, higher quality leads, but by, by default, both the Google platform and the Facebook platform for businesses are pay to play platforms. Yeah. Um, you, you do need to kind of pay. So everybody talks about, Oh, how do I set up my, and optimize my Facebook business page? Um, and my first question to them is always why? <laughs> Why do you actually want to set up your and optimize your Facebook business page? Um, because if you want to get any amount of reach through your business page, you have to pay Facebook to, to boost it, um, to run ads from it, um, you know, to run engagement style ads, to get more people to like and follow your business page. Whereas on the organic side of things, you know, most realtors that I engage with, you know, through Facebook and through my group, um, if you, if you go look at their personal profiles, you had have no idea <laughs> that they're, that they're a real estate agent, um, and your personal profile, your personal Instagram, um, those are, those are engagement accounts, right? Those are accounts that are designed to engage with people. And so as a realtor, um, and, and I'll, let me caveat this a little bit because I had the same problem. Um, you know, I have, I've been on Facebook since probably 2010. 
Um, so 12 years on the platform and it's always been personal, right? It's always mm. been, it's always been me, you know, running around with friends and, you know, occasionally drinking and having parties and things like that back in the day. And you get really embarrassed about those things, <laughs> you know, later on in life when you become a professional. And I, I had a really hard time actually converting my Facebook profile mm. into a business profile. Um, there was this weird mental gap that I had to jump through. But then I also realized that, you know, my, my business is a huge part of who I am, mm-hmm. right? Um, my family is a huge part of who I am. And there's no reason to not have those two things working simultaneously together on your social media profiles. And, and a lot of people are uncomfortable with advertising themselves on their business, on their personal profiles, um, to which I say, why? Your, yeah. your sphere of influence, the people that you are locally connected with, your friends, your family, um, they're, they're the ones that are going to support your business. Um, although I read a really funny quote about this the other day is that, um, you know, your friends and family, your, your clients are more likely to become your friends than your friends are more likely to become your clients. Mm, that's great. Right. Um, but my point, my point in all of this is that if people don't constantly remember and know that you are a realtor, um, they're not going to think about you. Yeah. Right. They're not going to think about you when the time comes to actually buy or sell a home. Um, and I, I may share this story later on about my first experience buying a home as a, you know, as a first time home buyer. Um, but setting up your local profiles and your personal profiles in a way that advertises that you are a realtor, I think is super, super important. Um, going into local community groups um, and sharing, not just trying to, you know, spam these local groups to try to generate leads, but actually going into these local groups to provide value, to provide updates on the market, to educate people who are thinking about buying a first time, buying their home for the first time or thinking about selling their home. Those are all things that you would naturally do from your personal profile. So why would you not have your personal profile set up in a way that advertises you as a yeah. realtor. Um, that's, that's my own experience was like that. I, I had my own Facebook profile, I think probably 2007, eight or six, I think. And then I got into real estate and then I created two kind of parallel accounts. I had mine for my professional account and then I had my own. And then I ended up using the professional one so much that I, I just basically don't even touch the other one. And that just became my personal and professional. And I've learned over the years to, to merge the two because that is important. And I think that's a big part of why a lot of agents try to move to one end of the spectrum or the other. It's either all personal or all professional. And a lot of agents struggle to blend those two together. And I find, again, in a farm, that's super important, especially if you're focusing on the community like we teach here is getting involved in the community, getting active, getting engaged with the people in your community. They want to know that you're a real person. They want to know that you're not this just stuffy suit and tie kind of person. And when you can use social media to kind of marry those two together, you can have amazing results and you can get results on either end of it. But when you merge the two, I think you're going to get a better overall experience. Totally. And it and it's super interesting, you know, for me, because I post a lot of business content. I post a lot of how-to content. Um, but I also post a lot of my family content Mm -hmm. Um, and the engagement that I get is always higher on my family content. Yeah. Right. Because that's, that's the real life stuff. Like that's the stuff that actually matters. That's the stuff that, that hits a chord with people. Um, And, and it's interesting that the, the people that actually engage with my, my personal stuff end up being the people who engage with me the most when it comes Mm -hmm. to my business stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and it's a great way for me to generate new clients um, and help more agents as well, just by, you know, just being, just being me yeah. um, and, and sharing my life as well as what I do. Yeah. Um, and, and I kind of like to practice what I preach um, in terms of, you know, use your personal profile to educate, to provide value, to, um, you know, give people information that they may need to make a decision about yeah. buying or selling real estate um, and and don't make it about you. Yeah. Right? And I think that's another key important key thing. I actually did a live in my group um, called Social Media Hacks for Real Estate where we teach realtors how to do what marketers do. Um, I, went, I went live in there a couple months ago and I actively tried to offend real estate <laughs> agents. Um, 
and and the way that I the way that I did that is I I talked about real estate content by and large that I'm seeing on profiles everywhere. Um, it's we got the job done, you know, another home sold, uh, another happy client, um, or look at all of my awards that I just got this year for selling the most homes in my brokerage. I'm now in the top one percent. Uh, you know, we see posts like that daily. Like anybody yeah. who's connected with real estate agents, that's the type of content that you see. Yeah. Um, and that type of content, just as a digital marketer and somebody who understands the concept of value add, I'm like, you got to stop posting that. <laughs> exactly. Like 100%. it's it, the only people who care about that content is yourself for a vanity metric and other realtors. That's exactly. it. Yep. prospects and people who might potentially think about buying or selling with you do not care. Yep. Um, the things that they care about are, you know, how, how do I actually go about getting a mortgage? What documents do I need? Is there a, who's the best mortgage broker in the city that I should be talking to and why? So an idea for that one is contact the mortgage broker that you partner with the most and say, Hey, why don't we do a live every Tuesday afternoon, where we talk about what's happening in the market, what's happening in the mortgage industry, um, go live with your mortgage broker and actually educate your audience just for no reason other than to educate them. Yeah. Um, what about providing, you know, a 10 step framework to properly list and sell your home? Um, things that they might need to consider. Um, maybe there's storage companies that they need to get a hold of to declutter. Um, start interviewing those companies locally in your city. So not only are you providing value, but you're also literally telling people where to go and what exactly. to do. That is high value content yeah. that you can easily do by just going live on your profile. Um, you know, when you're, when you're at a home or you're showing a home or you're at an open house, go live and talk about why you think that property is awesome. Why you, like that stuff's valuable too, because People are now getting to see you. They're now getting to see your personality. They're getting to see who you are. And, and I think one of the really important things that anybody can do is like, you know, I, I am a, I'm not a fan of hustle culture. I think hustle culture just drives, just, just drives me exactly. insane because it's always Same. me, 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 me. And, yeah. you know, you can do this, you can make millions, but what people actually genuinely care about is, is you, yeah. right? They care about who you are and the things that you stand for. Um, and the way that you operate and your message is not always going to resonate with 100% of the people who engage with your content, but the people that it will resonate with are the best people that you can potentially yep. work with. Yep. Um, so I always say, you know, pull your phone out of your pocket a little bit more often, force yourself to go live and talk to your audience um, because it's, it's you, it's raw, it's real. And that's the stuff that people are going to actually want. Exactly. to engage with. And that hits the, what I teach the, the CPR, which is the community positioning and relationships. It, it hits all of those things because you have the community that you're serving. You have the community that you're putting first, you're creating value for them. And by doing that, you're positioning yourself as that expert and ambassador. And you can be an expert without having to say you've sold this many homes or without beating your chest. And I, this is what I teach agents all the time is that it's not just about saying I'm the best at real estate. It could be, I'm an expert in the community. I'm an expert in the sales process. I'm an expert in whatever it is. And, and when we started our farm, we never sold a home in the neighborhood before, but we positioned ourselves to be the community expert. We positioned ourselves to know the models. We knew the builders, we knew everything that was going on. And then when we came to a listing appointment, it was easy because people go, Oh, you're, you're the experts. And we did that without even having even sold a home before that. And if agents understand that you can create content that positions you as someone who knows the community, knows the things that are happening, knows the processes, and you can then be the ambassador to them saying, Hey, I'm looking out for you. I'm not doing this because I'm the best agent. I'm not doing this because I'm trying to get an, another transaction. It's I'm looking out for you. I'm looking out for you in the process. I'm looking out for the community that I serve that builds relationships. And at the end of the day, the relationships are what matter. And that's how you build your farm is through that process. But you have to be for a lot of people, they have to reshift how they see the business. And it's like you said, it's not the vanity metrics. It's not the chest beating. It's not the bragging because most people will actually tune you out, not just tune in. They'll, they'll, they'll snooze you. They'll just unfriend you. If, if all you're doing is talking about how awesome you are, because people don't care about that. They care that they need to know that you care about them. And that's going to make a big difference. Bingo. I actually, 
just just to kind of add on to that in terms of like the the content I, when i talk to agents inside my group um oftentimes they say well what do i record what do i educate people on and my my answer to that is always well what do you know yeah right because and and i i know you're probably going to ask me this at the very end about my favorite book but i'm going to get ahead <laughs> of it right now and i'm going to talk about it um my favorite book i read um, probably right when I started my digital marketing business. Um, and it's called Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson, who's the mm-hmm. founder of ClickFunnels. Um, and I have his other book right here. <laughs> yeah, I've got a book right secrets. here too. <laughs> oh yeah, I've got that one too. We've got, we've got them both right here. Boom, boom. Yeah. Um, you know, that that one of the concepts in his book that really shifted my mindset, because when I first started my business, which I'm sure that new agents probably feel the same way, is that, I'm actually not an expert, Mm -hmm. right? There's been, there's people in the market that have been doing this for five, six, 10, 20 years. Those people are experts. And so I felt this imposter syndrome starting my business. And I think that, you know, a lot of new agents feel this as well, where they're like, well, I've actually never sold a home. So how can I advertise, you know, helping people sell a home if I've never done it? Um, What Russell Brunson writes about in Traffic Secrets is, or sorry, expert secrets is the concept that you may not know everything, but you know something that someone else doesn't know. Yeah. And so start to share that information. Um, and that goes back to my earlier point of like, you know, people want to, A, want to engage with you. People want to get educated by you. Um, and people just don't know what they don't know. Your message is not going to resonate with everybody that yeah. watches your stuff but it's going to resonate with the right people. So when we're talking about, you know, organic content to help you online, to farm your community, to educate your community, talk about the things, you know, period. Yep. Over time, your knowledge, your knowledge base is going to grow and you can now start to talk about more things um, and, and really truly become an expert, but don't pretend to be an expert in things that you aren't an expert in. Yep. Talk about the things that you know. And, and you can, and you can like Russell talks about in that book too, is that you can also document yourself learning in that journey and share that and say, Hey, I'm going to learn this. And that's, I've got a side project I'm working on right now for, I'm into gardening and, and I'm going to starting a project. And I'm saying like, I'm not an expert on this, but I'm going to learn. And I'm going to show you what I learned along the process, along the way. And if you're that open and honest with people, you can say, Hey, you know, I'm new to the community or I'm new to this area. I'm new to real estate. I'm, I want to find out all the best restaurants. I want to find out all the best businesses in the area. I want to find out about all the best parks or the schools, or I'm going to teach you the processes of what you need to learn. And I'm going to show you along the way. You can do that without having to say, I've sold a hundred homes. You can do that. And people will be more appreciative of your honesty and upfront and that they'll come along the journey with you. And like you said, as long as you know, one step ahead of people, you can share that with people and people will connect with you and resonate. You may not connect with someone who wants a, someone who sold hundred homes before, but you will find your audience who will connect with you and you will be able to, to build a, a strong following. Bingo. You, you hit the nail on the head, man. So I want to shift gears and talk about some strategies that we can implement because obviously it's great to know that we can do this, but a lot of agents struggle with going out and what to do. Like you mentioned, agents struggle with coming up with content. We were talking earlier offline about shifting from online to offline and offline to online content. Cause I find again, there's a, a gap there for a lot of agents because they don't know how to merge the two well, or to do it tastefully. So where do you see the opportunities for agents to connect with an audience offline, drive them online or vice versa? I, I love, I love this, this concept because, you know, I've been, I've been in the technology space since the day I got my first job out of high school. Um, and so to technology to me, just, I come by it honestly. And I, I love the digital space. I love the digital platform, but I also know having been now working exclusively with realtors over the past five years that, you know, traditional methods are what are taught. Yeah. Right. So you're, you're going to farm your community. So you're going to throw up a billboard. You're going to throw out a bus bench. You're going to create door hangers. You're going to go door knocking. You're going to host open houses in that community. Like those are the, those are the typical old school methods um, that people are taught uh, by their brokerage or by the, their coaches and whatnot. Um, and so for me being a little bit more of a creative and, and a digital techie type, I'm like, well, 
how how do we actually make that process merge with the digital world? Mm -hmm. um, and and the whole concept behind this actually came early on in my Facebook lead generating career for real estate agents when Facebook actually changed their targeting rules, right? You can no longer target a specific community on Facebook under the special ads category. Yeah. Um, you have to do a 25 kilometer or a 15 mile radius around your target location, which is really inconvenient <laughs> when you're trying to farm a community, which that's what most realtors do. Um, and so I started to look at, okay, well, how are agents actually currently farming locally in their community? And those are all those things that I just mentioned, billboards, bus benches, door hangers, um, brochures, um, door knocking, open houses, you know, and I started thinking, well, any, anything that is a print media product can have a QR code on it. And that QR code can go to a landing page and now you've reached the digital world. Right. And, and the things that you can do with, you know, some people may or may not appreciate or like this, but I do. Um, you can track people yeah, exactly. that reach your website. Yeah. And so, you know, if you're going to do your mailers anyways, and you're going to do your bus benches and you're going to do your billboards, add one simple thing to those billboards. Um, and and a, a quick piece of advice, you know, for anybody from a marketing perspective, um, is that you need to have some sort of an offer mm -hmm. that you can that you can provide for your for your database. Give them a reason to scan that that QR code. Um, and I would like to challenge anybody listening to this to try to get a little bit more creative than a free home evaluation. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, because you and everybody else, right? Um, you want to try to stand out in your market, so instead of doing a free home evaluation, let's get a little bit creative on maybe you sell, instead of giving them a free home evaluation, do you think people would be more interested in, hey, do you wanna see every single house that sold in your neighborhood in the last three months? Scan this, scan this QR code to take a look. Like that's gonna pique people's curiosity. Be like, yeah. oh, my neighbor's house went up for sale like a month ago. I wanna know what it sold for versus, hey, we'll give you a free home evaluation. So. Get creative with what you're offering, but try to offer things of value. Um, send them to a page where they can they can opt in and give you their information um, or call you. Um, but at the end of the day, and one of the one of my favorite pages that I've ever seen actually from a QR code um, is is it was a video of the community. Mm. Here's the things that we love, and it was actually my community, obviously, and it was actually my parents' old realtor from like 20 years ago. Nice. Um, him and his son work together now. And I, when I went live and spoke about this in my group, I literally grabbed, I went to the mailbox, I pulled out all my mail um, and I filtered through 10 real estate flyers that hit my mailbox at the exact same day. Um, and one of them had a call to action with an offer yeah. with a QR code for me to just quickly open my phone, tap my camera, scan it, and I was now on their website. Yeah. Um, I, I did a little bit of poking around and they did not have any tracking pixels or anything like that <laughs> on their website. So I reached out to them and I said, hey, great idea, but here's what you could do better. Yeah. Um, so that's one way of doing it. And I want to I want to I want to actually share something. So I went on a road trip um, to Kelowna with a bunch of friends for a bachelor party not too long ago um, in Alberta, where I'm from you don't see a ton of billboards as you're driving in to cities. But in British Columbia, where we were going, every city that you drive into has billboards. And probably 60% of those billboards are real estate agents. Yeah. <laughs> and so as I'm driving through these cities, I'm like, I'm, I'm actually going to do my best to remember a single name <laughs> yeah. off of one of these billboards. Yeah. Um, and after my drive, I could not remember a single one. I couldn't remember a single face. I couldn't remember a single phone number. And I'm like, apart from, you know, if you're, if you're a high producing agent that can just afford that name recognition and that brand recognition, then sure. Billboards are a great idea. Um, but for anybody else, why are you wasting your money? hundred percent on that. 
yeah. um, because it's not creating, it's it's not creating any value. Um, it's not it's not creating a memorable space. And when people are driving, that's the only thing you can do when people are driving by your billboard at 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour, yeah. um, is just to get a quick. Oh, I, I've seen that face before, and that's about it. Um, so, I like to go bus benches because it's stationary. People are going to sit there, have a QR code. If you're going to send out mailers, have a QR code with a call to action and a reason for them to actually scan that thing to get us something um, and then educate them on that page as well. Now you can take that digital information, whether they filled out your form or not, and you can start to put low cost. And I mean, low cost. Yeah. If you run a video ad talking about your community, that's the cheapest type of ad you can run. You can run that for $5 a day and get tens of thousands of views every single month. Yeah. Um, and then you can take that and you can start to retarget the people that are actually engaging with your content so that they see more of your content. Um, and I, I, tr I try to teach agents how to do this because a lot of agents, um, when they're talking about online marketing or lead generation, they just want leads right now that are yeah. ready to close right now yeah. um, with as little effort as humanly possible. Um, and I talk a lot um, in almost all of my content about social media is a great platform to build the no like, and trust factor yep. with people who don't know, like, or trust you. And so we need to start to leverage that to actually build the no like, and trust factor before we actually go for generating leads. Yep. Um, because it just, it just doesn't work for 90% of agents, right? If, if you're generating leads online, you know, you've got to, you've probably got to call them seven times in the first week. You've got to text them seven times in the first week. You've got to add them to a long-term drip campaign. That's going to go up for 12 months, which by the way, 90% of agents use a templated drip campaign that their brokerage provided with them that everybody else is sending them. That is not personalized. That is not building the no like, and trust factor with that specific agent. Um, so you have to do all of these things and you have to have a ton of touch points. We know this because we call people's leads for them. Um, and sometimes it takes 25 plus phone calls over a six month period before one of those, I call them cold to sold leads is even ready to start talking to you. Yeah. Um, so the method that I much prefer, which is a much more advanced method, obviously is creating video content to educate your audience, putting that video content on QR codes, on landing pages for your postcards so that people can start to engage with your business um, online, right? And then once they've started to engage with your business, you can put more educational content in front of them. And then by the time they actually see, you know, a link to generate a lead or get their contact, they're already like, I, I know Ryan, Yeah, you know, like, Ryan's that guy that showed me where this amazing restaurant was in my community that I went to last week. And it was amazing. Um, yeah, I want to, I'm looking to buy a house. I want to talk to Ryan. Exactly. Right. Simple stuff like that, that people just overlook um, exactly. when it comes to their marketing. Um, and I want to stress again, nobody cares about your accomplishment. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. And except for other realtors and your brokerage, your brokerage cares a lot about your accomplishment because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. they make money. Yeah. Um, but people, the people who are going to become your clients need to be educated. They need to be served. Yeah. Um, and that is an area that most realtors need to work on. Exactly. And I, and I think the inverse is true as well in that if you get online leads, you're getting people that have never met you in person or don't get anything from you, sending something offline, uh, tangible, hard copy, something is just as important too. That's one of the things that we did in our go. farm. We were we do online lead generation and we send out a monthly uh, report that we send out with all the home sales in the area and having something physical helps take that digital person, that online ad that they saw or that lead landing page they landed on and create some value to them offline. And that's where that, when you learn to merge the two and, and cross over, you're going to get more value. And I, I talk about all the time, like a book, if I hold a book and I hold a physical book, there's more perceived value to me than an ebook. I've got hundreds or probably thousands of eBooks I've downloaded over the years that are sitting in a folder somewhere that I never read because I don't really see the value in them. A physical copy of a book sitting on my desk that I can pick up, hold, sit in the bath and read or sit on my couch and read has more value, even though the content's exactly the same. So you need to not just be digital. You need to not just be sitting, creating content 
you also need to be sending some physical things. And I think that once you, if you got them online, send them something offline. If you got them from offline, make sure you send them stuff online because when you hit people in both areas, online and offline, they're going to remember you more. There's going to be a lot more uh, convert, a higher conversion from doing that. And it, it, it becomes so much easier to convert when you're meeting them in both of those spaces. 100%. And, and the other thing to, the other important piece of that is knowing who your audience is in your community, mm. right? Are you, are you living in an older, more established community where the owners may be retirees? Well, probably QR codes and technology is not going to yeah. work for that type of client. Yeah. Um, whereas if you're in a, maybe a newer, younger family oriented community, well, now you got to start thinking about technology because mm -hmm. anybody born, you know, in their early nineties or before have grown up with technology. And, you know, that's the generation now that is going to be your 25, 26, 27, 30 year olds that are thinking about getting into their first homes. Yeah. So how do you speak to that audience with your traditional marketing methods and then properly speak to that audience with your online methods, because exactly. that's where they are. Um, but yeah, it's, it's super important to know the demographic in your community to know what style of marketing makes the most sense. Like our retirees on Facebook, yes, they are, but not in nearly the numbers that, you know, millennials are, yeah. um, and millennials are the ones that are buying homes now. Yep. Um, yeah. So know, know your, your message, audience, definitely. know your community yeah. and, and market specifically that way to them. Exactly. So if you were to give our viewers one last piece of advice to get, if they're getting into this world of, of digital and online and offline, what advice would you give them? Um, done is better than perfect. Yeah, exactly. uh, we live in a, we live in a technology age now where there's incredible content creators who are doing amazing things. And I think that that can be a significant roadblock to somebody who is not that well versed in video content or creation. Um, that's going to stop them dead in their tracks from even attempting to do it because they're like, it's not going to be as good as that person. And so therefore I'm not going to do it. Um, done is better than perfect. Do it. And over time, perfection will become an art form that you learn. Um, That's great advice. Yeah. That I, yes, awesome. I love that. advice. <laughs> I give myself that advice every day. Um, just do it. And over time, you're going to improve over time. You're going to get better. But if you don't do it at all, you're never going to improve. Yep, exactly. We always wrap up with the best book you mentioned it earlier. Let's give another shout out for it again, if you want. Okay. So I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to do another one here. All right. <laughs> um, okay. So obviously we talked about expert secrets. I love this book because it teaches me how to think about what I know and then how to deliver the information that I know. So if you want to learn how to, you know, build courses or educate people with content, expert secrets is a great one. Um, the other one that I really love is traction. Mm -hmm. um, this book has given me an amazing insight in actually how to build a business, um, which talking about real estate agents that, you know, it's the number one reason that I see real estate agents fail. There's a, there's a 90% failure rate in the real estate industry in a, the first five years. Um, and having the opportunity to speak to and engage with, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of real estate agents through online methods, the number one thing that I see and I notice is that the most successful agents operate a business. The agents that grow to fail are not willing to invest invest in themselves and invest in their business. They're they're cheap. Um, <laughs> you know, they won't they won't buy a forty nine dollar program or training to actually help them learn something. Um, they either think they're going to get ripped off or they just simply don't have the money. Um, those agents live for their paycheck so that they can pay their mortgage, feed their family. Um, they don't know how to operate a business. And Traction is is probably one of the best books I've ever read to actually properly help you structure a functional business so that you know you can remove yourself from the business instead of mm -hmm. constantly working in the business. Um, and that has that's relevant to agents. Um, and most people don't think that because they're like, I'm a real estate agent. I have to do everything. Yeah. Well, actually, no, you don't have to yeah. do everything. And, and you can't you do everything if you want to scale 
your business to great heights. Yeah, exactly. um, you need help. You need to build a team. You need to outsource work so that you can focus on the revenue generating tasks for your business. So traction would be the other one, properly awesome. building and structuring a business. Awesome. Well, Excerpt Secrets is part of the reason why I'm here doing this because that was one of the books that helped me really take my knowledge, take my skill set, and go, hey, I can do this and I can I can teach people how to do this and, and be that expert. So it's an awesome book. I highly recommend it. Traction, I haven't read personally, but I've heard great things about it. So I'll definitely have to check that out myself. So how can our viewers check out what you're up to, connect with you, and find out more about a bit about what you're doing? So Facebook is my platform of choice. Um, and, and if I can plug one last thing, um, don't get overwhelmed by trying to use all the platforms. Yeah. Um, pick one that you're comfortable with, stick on it. Um, so Facebook is the best way to get a hold of me. Um, you can search me, Adam McKinnis, or you can go to facebook.com slash scale with Adam um, to find me. The other way that you can actually interact with me is through my Facebook group it's called Social Media Hacks for real estate, um, where we actually teach real estate agents to do a lot of the things that I just talked about um, and much, much more. My, co my whole concept behind this group is, you know, I, why don't I just teach people what I do? Um, <laughs> literally what we just talked about, right? Educate your audience. Uh, if I teach people what I do, you know, some of them are going to take that information and, and actually scale their business. Um, most of them will not um, and may need help along the way somewhere along the lines. And hopefully, uh, we get to work together and collaborate together on some things. So social media hacks for real estate. Um, Facebook group is another great way to actually engage with me um, and learn more about what I do and, and actually educate yourself a little bit so that you can continue to, to get build and grow and hopefully be pushed and encouraged to actually take action and create that done is better than perfect mentality for your business. That's a great group. That's how we connected. There's a lot of great content in there. You just recently shared an um, awesome tip on uh, using uh, online ads to our online Facebook uh, lead Facebook generation. Facebook lead forms, forms organically on your business profile. So you don't have to pay Facebook for leads. It's genius. So if you're watching this, be sure to check that out. We'll put all the uh, contact information in the show notes along with the book as well. So thank you, Adam, for being on the show. I really appreciate you sharing your insight, wisdom, and experience with our agents. I know that if they apply this and, and take the steps on it, they can definitely see some amazing results. So thank you for being on. And uh, I really appreciate you being here. Yeah. And if, and if any agents, you know, feel like they've heard what we've said here today and they want to start implementing some of those things, but they're really not sure where to start, um, go join Social Media Hacks for Real Estate jump on a call with me. You know, I'm always happy to help um, wherever I can. So um, but yeah, educate yourself. Done is better than perfect. Awesome. Thanks, Adam. Awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Take care. Check out our Facebook page and our other social media channels. Looking forward to bringing you more great content like this and happy farming. <laughs>